Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. The following processing video is split into three parts, taking you by the hand in editing M81 Boats Galaxy. If you want, you can download the data with the link in the description and follow along at home. I am using PixInsight as well as the AI powered tools by RC Astro. Most of this process is adapted from the similar series on mono editing by the PixInsight team but I added a few new tweaks and explanations to keep it up to date. Welcome to PixInsight. I have all of my process icons loaded in the top right corner here. It's just a basic assembly of all these process icons I used over the years. We will not use all of those, but I just have most of them ready as needed. There are already all of our master files loaded in the top left corner there. This video is not about stacking, this video is about only editing these images. We have master images in LRGB and HA. The luminance image you can see right here looks pretty decent, at least for my expectations. We have the R channel, this is the blue channel and the green channel. Look all pretty decent in my opinion. And HA. I would like HA to be a bit sharper, but I, I think this is all I can get with this camera and telescope combination. The first thing we have to do is to crop these images. As you can see, we still have stacking artifacts and the dithering in the corners. That's why we will use a dynamic crop. I don't know if this is the correct use of dynamic crop, but it's at least a step that will work. The luminance image will be my reference image for cropping. I will now apply a basic crop and orient myself at the edges here. Top crop will be here. Bottom is the corner over here. The left corner is over here. And the right corner like this, maybe. So the galaxy is neatly in the center. With these settings I will now create a new instance just for this editing process. Apply this. We can already see that the astrometric solution will be broken if you crop. This does not really matter because we will calculate that one again. I think we have some black edges around the corner. I will boost it. Yeah, they are still edges here I will need to crop a bit more. Undo the crop, stretch it again. Well I have to try this again. Reset the dynamic in reset the dynamic window and crop more. It's kinda hard to see with these auto stretches where to crop. I guess this image will be a bit more cropped in than the one I published. Maybe like this. Create an instance, apply. Yeah, this is fine. This could only be a gradient maybe. We can also see a gradient around the entire galaxy over here. Now let's apply the same thing to the R image. Close this window and open the instance. And now we have the same crop applied to basically each of these images. Apply, throw away the solution. Again, I don't know if this is the correct way to use dynamic crop, but it works kind of fast. And now we have all of these images cropped to the same size. Perfect. And the images are still registered, of course, so I can put those on top of each other. Nice. The first thing, the first major step in processing, I have my small cheat sheet on the side here on the other monitor because I haven't done this process a lot, but I tried it at least a couple times and I think it's quite powerful. Some things I always wanted to point out. There's so much signal in this data. For example, look at this 
beautiful double star over here. You can see the double diffraction spikes, looks pretty cool. And a small minor, I think it's a, actually a galaxy, or a cluster of stars at least, over here. Looks really cool. The first major step in processing. We have a luminance image and we have RGB images. But if you think about it, the RGB images, if we would combine them, they would be another luminance image. And we and if we combine those with the actual luminance image, we'll get a better signal in the luminance image. So that's exactly what we will do. We will integrate all of these images, luminance RGB, to create a synthetic luminance channel. For this purpose, since I cropped these images now, I will have to save all of them. So I'll save the master light frame, save as. And now I can maybe create a new folder here and call it masters cropped and save all of these images as EXIF in the Pixinsight format. And oh, now I will have to save all of these. Now we can use image integration to integrate all of these images, the luminance RGB, to create a synthetic luminance image, which will have more clarity, more detail, less noise than the luminance as we have it right now. I will go into processes and find image integration, it's right over here. I will add my files, these ones I saved right now. The weightening here will be important, we'll, we want to have the best signal to noise ratio basically if we add all of these together, so we go to SNR. It's important that you uncheck all of the pixel rejection algorithms because these have already been applied when stacking each of these images. So now hit go. And this will integrate for maybe some time. It is done. We now have the rejection map. It should be black. Yes, we rejected no pixels. I will apply the auto stretch to this image. And now we have a much better luminance image for our editing. If we put these side by side and focus on the galaxy. It may be not very apparent on YouTube, but at least I can see much more clarity in most of these structures. For example, the smaller galaxy or cluster up here. If I zoom in on that a little, a little more. Yeah, definitely less noise. Now we have this integrated image. I will call it SYNL for Synthetic Luminance Channel. Beautiful. Since we have this now, we can actually close the master light frame. Light frame? We can now close the master luminance image, but we could, clo we could close it. I will leave it up there. Next step is to combine our RGB images. And we will do that using, very simply, channel combination. I will just drag the image identifiers over here. The, there is no astrometric solution. I will hit apply global and we'll get a RGB image. To better demonstrate some of these concepts, I will use the, instead of using the auto stretch button over here, I will use the screen transfer function, which can do the same thing, which does the same thing, but we can play with these things a little more. If I now just hit stretch, we can see this image is very blue. It seems like the blue channel on this image is much stronger than the other channels. If we unlink these RGB channels in the stretching, we can see the galaxy over here. But we can see if they are linked at the same rate, the blue channel is much stronger. 
This can have many reasons, probably something in stacking and normalizing, but we can fix this now. I will close this image, we have to combine them again, but we will fit all of these channels first. I have the process linear fit over here. As a reference image we will take the much too strong blue channel and apply this process now to all of these other color channels. I will apply it to green and in the process console over here we can see how much green needs to be stretched to be equal to blue. So now we have the same background level and intensity and we can see in the console the image had to be multiplied by 9.6 to be in equal to blue. And same thing for red. Look at this. Red has to be stretched much more. And had, it had to be stretched by 8.4. That's a lot. But it won't matter right now since these images are still linear. Close this and combine the channels again. R G B. And now, even if we unlink these channels when stretching, we can see a beautiful galaxy. We unlink the channels so you can see the gradients, which are still apparent in these images. The next step before combining... The next step before color calibration is to get rid of these gradients in RGB, L and HA. So I will call this image RGB. And continue with that. We now need to remove the gradients. There is the gradient correction tool. And most of these settings are fine. I will use structure protection because the galaxy is quite big. I will go for the convergence so it doesn't just run off. And if the gradients are not corrected enough, we can reduce the scale and smoothness. So I will just try it like this, create a copy of the image and make it the entire image a preview. Apply the process. Should be quite fast. And now if we use the boosted auto stretch we can see maybe residual gradients. To me, I think I can see a dark halo around this galaxy. I think I want to reduce the scale maybe. And let's see what happens if we disable structure protection. So this is... Boost this. Let's try that again and compare these images. This is with gradients and this is without. Let's zoom out a bit. Kinda helps in my opinion. With gradients without gradients. I think there are still some residual gradients left. I will reduce the scale and the smoothness. Try that again. You could also get rid of the gradients in each color channel before combining, but this is just easier. You only have to do it once. It does it for every color channel. Without, with gradients and without. I think this is fine. The gradients in the RGB image are not that, don't matter that much. Because the luminance in all of these area is quite low after we combine them. So let's apply this to the main view. And we can move on to correct the gradients in the other monochrome images. Put RGB over here, go for synthetic luminance, get it to the right size. 
There are not that many gradients in here, but they are still apparent. There's this dark halo around this galaxy, so structure protection will be off, I think. And let's go with the same settings over here. Create a preview and put the entire image in it. And now we actually need to check if the galaxy has been affected without the structure protection. Stretch the image and look at the before and after. There is a change in this galaxy but it's only in the darker regions on the left, I think. And also the dark halo has been removed a tiny bit. I think this is fine. All of this in the end has to be to your liking. If you follow along, you can also, you can of course choose something else. Apply this to the main view and move on to HA. The master HA, there should be the least gradients in here. Now we can see some cropping artifacts, but these don't matter that much. Since this is just narrowband data, there are basically no gradients in here. But I think they've been... Yeah, there's basically a vignetting removed right now. The center of the image is a bit darker and the outside brighter. I think this works. As you can see all the star creation regions in the outskirts of the galaxy and of course the continuum emission in the center. Quite nice.